Welcome to Hello Baltimore County. I'm your host, Ellen Kobler. We're here today in County Executive Kevin Kamenetz's office in Towson to talk to him about the county's priorities in Annapolis for the General Assembly this year. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for coming here. You're very welcome. In previous years, education has been a main focus for you and for the county. Is that what you see looking into this year? For the General Assembly yes, in Annapolis, mm -hmm. absolutely. We, uh, we continue our march for a, a very impressive school construction program where it's a $1.3 billion commitment. We're building 15 new schools, 11 additions, eight major renovations, uh, just really working hard to update our schools, adding Wi-Fi technology and public safety features, and we're also adding classroom seats, more than 6,000 seats to accommodate future growth. No county in the history of this state has ever expended so much for a school construction program than we're doing here in Baltimore County for a single plan. And uh, for every one dollar we receive from the state, we're putting two county tax dollars in to get the job done. All right, and one of the issues that has been talked about quite a bit is air conditioning in the schools. Where do you stand in terms of that, and what do you see moving forward this year? Well, of course, that's always been part of our greater plan with the renovation and uh, new construction that we want to add air conditioning because when I took office in 2010, 90 schools did not have air conditioning. I'm really proud of the hard work everyone's doing. Uh, we've gone now from 90 to this fall when we open up down to 13 schools without air conditioning. Next year it'll be three schools and those three are at the end there because they're going to be brand new schools. So uh, it's, it's just been a remarkable success story and we've done it using central air which is the best prudent investment and the most effective use of climate control. That's instead of portable air conditioning. Yeah, yeah that's just kind of silly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Tell us a little bit about some of your other priorities in Annapolis th this year in terms of statewide issues. Well, we tried to focus on issues that are, are going to be discussed statewide, but also have implications right here in Baltimore County. So one of the bills that we're going to be supporting is a tightening of the laws relating to sexual assault. And we had some issues in our police department of how we can improve our process of dealing with sexual assault cases, and we're working with the Maryland Coalition Against Sexual Assault to help us uh, do an even better job of what we do. But as a result of those conversations, we're supportive of legislation that will remove the uh, from the definition uh, the requirement of resistance. That is, if it's a, a consent is really the issue here, consent or lack of consent. And we also support a standardization of the storage of rape kits. Uh, that makes sense now, especially since we don't have to refrigerate them and we can hold them for a, a period of time. And we think that should be a consistent standard statewide. So these are, uh, you know, this is an important step. Another thing that we're talking about is dealing with the issue of fracking, which is this hydraulic pressure that is used to extract, uh, to break up the rock, the bedrock, uh, and clean out fissures that are in there that would allow extraction of natural gas. And while uh, we don't necessarily have identified areas in Baltimore County that could be subject to fracking, uh, there are other areas of the state where that can occur. Western and, Maryland. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, and what happens is when they do this fracking, they're, they're actually pouring chemicals into uh, the ground. Uh, and uh, while they try and extract those chemicals, there's no guarantee. And I relate that back to our county because uh, two-thirds of our county uh, uh, geographically is rural in nature and uh, many of our residents, a large portion of our residents are on well and, and septic as opposed to public water and sewer and that means that they draw from this wells from the aquifer system that feeds our state. We not only have 200 miles of waterfront here on the Chesapeake Bay in Baltimore County, but we also have 2,000 miles of streams and tributaries that also supply the region's water supply. You know, the reservoirs are primarily located in Baltimore County. So I think from an environmental protection point of view, uh, uh, this is probably the right move to continue the uh, current uh, uh, ban on fracking. Uh, 
and I, that's, a, that's the right move, a moratorium on fracking. Okay, and at the beginning of the um, General Assembly session, you stood with um, Attorney General Brian Frosch and a lot of other leaders to talk about prescription drug affordability. That's something I think a lot of people are interested in. Well, first of all, of course, we have so many seniors who reside in Baltimore County, uh, but we also, who, who are dependent upon certain drugs, and uh, we, we really have unscrupulous uh, entrepreneurs who are buying up these drug companies and then for no uh, reason other than pure greed are uh, uh, increasing the price of certain necessary drugs by 3,000 percent or more. Uh, and uh, this bill will give the Attorney General the right to investigate drug companies for price gouging. And uh, you know, obviously we all rely upon prescription drugs. Uh, and from the county's perspective, we have 20,000 employees here who have a county health plan. So our taxpayers are also paying for those benefits that we self-insure for prescription drug prices. So it helps uh, protect our existing budget here in Baltimore County, as well as the budget of everyone who could be susceptible to this price gouging. Interesting. All right, and as a former prosecutor, could you weigh in on the issue that's currently being discussed about the money-based bail system in Maryland? You know, this is really a helpful conversation where we have evolved in Maryland, where we're starting to focus on how, how who do we incarcerate and why? Mm -hmm. And in the bail situation, it's a money-based system. So someone's arrested for a crime, they go before a commissioner or a judge, and then an initial determination is made to determine two things. One, are you a flight risk? Are you a risk to fail to appear at trial? Or two, uh, are you a, a, a threat to the community? And those are the two factors that a judge is supposed to impose a bail. Well, the reality is, uh, by having a money-based bail, that is, you know, whether you can afford to post a bail or not, has nothing to do with those two factors. If you post the money bail and you pay a bail bondsman and you skip, it's the bail bondsman who, who pays the price. Uh, if, you, um, uh, if you can't post a bail, or if you have enough money, if you're a big drug dealer, think about this, I can post a bail, but that doesn't mean I'm no longer a threat to the community. I sure am. Interesting. You know, or a violent criminal committing robberies, you know. So uh, the idea is to not determine whether one is released based upon their wealth or their ability to uh, pay a bail. The real issue should be the specific factor of are they a flight risk or uh, is there a, li uh, a likelihood that they're a threat to the community? And if they're not, then generally they should be released on their own recognizance. So what's happening is uh, a judge feels this obligation to impose a bail of $500, some type of what we would consider to be a nominal bail or $1,000 for some type of nuisance crime because they, they are a repeat offender, but it's you know a nuisance crime more than anything else. And um, they can't meet that bail. Some people, they can't post $500 or $1,000. Then they will sit in the Baltimore County Jail, our detention center, awaiting trial. And the cost to the county and to our taxpayers is exorbitant in terms of having to feed them and uh, provide medical care for them and uh, mental health issues and, and the whole plethora of, of things, all because they, didn't, they weren't able to make that token bail. So take out that concept. And, and look at the real risk factors and focus just on that. Yeah, and then they're also not working and supporting their family. True. All right, well, thank you so much for taking some time with us today. We'll keep our eyes on Annapolis. Great. Great, and thank you for watching Hello Baltimore County. Don't forget, you can keep up with these issues and more by following Baltimore County on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time. Thanks.